is up YouTube? What's cool? What's groovy? What's happening? Welcome back to my channel. It's time for life. I'm here with another one and this is something that I've wanted to do for a very, 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 very long time, but I never got around to doing it and I'm just like, let me just do it. I want a name for this series and that's one of the reasons that has kind of kept me back from doing this. Um, but I'm going to be talking about different stories in the Bible. These days when I read the Bible, things are just revealed to me in such a different way. I'm going to talk about the story of David and Goliath, right? I'm going to summarize kind of 1 Samuel chapter 17. And that's the story of David and Goliath. Now, everybody knows this story, but it's a lot of little things that happen that are just mind blowing. They're just amazing. So let's get right into it. So Goliath is a Philistine and he's a giant giant and he's trying to, you know, challenge the Israelites to a battle and he has been for years. Um, so he's walking around every single day and he's like, choose a man for yourselves. Let him come down to me. If he's able to fight me and kill me, then we will be your servants, which I think is hilarious because by the time they do all that, he would be gone. So he's actually <laughs> challenging these people and whatever the repercussions will be, will not actually fall on his head, but will fall on the head of his people. But anyway, Saul and all of Israel hear these words and they're all like super afraid as you will be. Now there is um, David, um, son of Jesse. And Jesse has three other sons. And the other sons, they follow Saul, King Saul, to battle, right? So they're Eliab, Abinadab, and Shammah. They follow Saul to battle. But David is the youngest of all the boys. And, well, you know, he just goes back to feed the sheep um, of his father in Bethlehem. So he does that. He he tends to the sheep and stuff like that, right? And he's kind of the forgotten, the forgotten child, you know. These guys are the strong big boys that go out to battle. And David is kind of the one that's just taking care of the sheep in the background, right? Then Jesse says to David, his son, um, you know, that he should go with some 10 loaves and some other stuff and parched grain and stuff and carried it carry to the camp where the brothers are, you know, and see if his brothers are well. And David left with all these things, actually leaves them with the keeper of baggage, the keeper of the baggage. That's, that's apparently a role. I need, I need me one of these roles. Like when I'm just in town and I have a lot of luggage or when I'm traveling or something, just to drop some stuff off at the, the keeper of the baggage and they can just take care of it for a little while. I think that's a very cool. Anyway, and very handy, very useful. So he does that. Why? Because he's so eager to like, just go and see how his brother is doing. He's like, you keep this stuff for now. I'm just going to run and see how my brothers are doing and stuff like that. So he goes there, you know, and, um, basically Goliath comes and speak the same words that he's been saying, challenging the Israelites and stuff like that. And David hears this, right? So they're all very afraid and stuff like that. And, you know, <laughs> he he runs down there to see how his brothers are doing right. Then Eliab, the oldest brother, hears when David is speaking to the men. So he's speaking to those around him like, are you serious? We can totally, we can totally do this. We could totally take this guy down, right? You know, who is this guy that he should defy the armies of the living God, right? He's so confident that they can take Goliath down. And Eliab, his older brother, hears him and he's like, why have you come down? And with whom have you left those sheep in the wilderness? As if that's... <laughs> See, you have people in this life, right? That you mean the best, you mean so well. And this is, this is kind of how they treat you, right? They don't see the heart behind the things that you're doing. And it is really, really sad. But anyway... Um, he says, I know your presumption and the evil of your heart, right? He thinks David is coming there to gloat because he knows that the brothers are going to get killed. Isn't that really painful that that is his own brother and he doesn't even know the nature of his brother's soul? Like, he doesn't even know the kindness of his heart? That is how far back they have kind of pushed David. David says to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him, as in Goliath. Your servant will go and fight with this guy. Now, Saul is like, you can't do that. You're but a young person and all this stuff. But then David explains to him, tells him a story that when he was tending the sheep for his father, right? When a lion or bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if it rose against me, I cut him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears. And this uncircumcised Philistines shall be like none of them. 
you know, in the Bible. That was their curse phrase. You uncircumcised dot, dot, dot. That's, yeah. So that, that's what that was back then. So this is what he used to do. And I don't think that anybody knew that he was not just lally daddling, walking around, tending the sheep. But obviously, you know, it, it's out there and there's other animals as well. Um, obviously predators as well. But nobody knew his story. Nobody knew what he had to face day in, day out. There was a king and a champion in David. But nobody had taken the time to actually realize that. And nobody had taken the time... To, to find out what it was that he was going through. But he went through it and he went through it quietly. That's why nobody knew what he was capable of doing. You know, he never complained about anything. Meanwhile, this is what he was doing, right? And this is what I want to tell you. There is a king in you. There is a fighter in you. That even though everybody around you is like, he just tends sheep. He, he can't do anything. He won't amount to anything. You can know by the things that you are doing in your life and the things that you have been through that there is a king in you and sometimes it needs to be hidden for a bit sometimes you need to be quiet for a bit and let people show off and do what they're doing right because god is seasoning you god is preparing you for a moment such as this for you to show what what you can do and for and it's not even to show to anybody but there there is a, a growth period that is necessary and then you reach your peak and when you reach that peak that is when a situation will arrive that you can now use those skills and you can now use what god has blessed you with throughout this kind of period sometimes you need to go through the pain without complaining your victory is at the end of it all just think of it like like that everything you do do it with your heart do it with love do it with passion and do it well because when you do that well you can use those skills you can use that wisdom and that knowledge for greater things that are ahead. There is a king in you. There is a queen in you. And sometimes you just need to be crowned. But crown yourself in the, mean, in the meantime. Know that you are able, that you are capable. And one day people will see it as well. But in the meantime, let's keep it between you and God. He knows. And I hope that you know. Anyway, that's what my little two cents on 1 Samuel chapter 17. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, I was rambling on for quite a bit, but whatever you do, make sure you hit bump, stomp, zone on that subscribe button and make time for a glorious life. I will see you in the next one. Bye. Mm.